Hey guys, so a while back I did a tutorial on how to create a site model from contours. And this is a tutorial that I posted up on YouTube. So today we're going to take a look at how to take that one step further. And we're going to take a site model and we're going to turn it into a set of sections that you could send to your laser cutter in order to fabricate it. Okay, so for the intents of this tutorial, I'm going to just take a, a rough mesh like this that I built, but the principle should more or less be the same. So without further ado, let's uh, let's get into it. So I'm going to dive into a new document, and uh, I'm going to start this by saying there's there's a couple of obviously there's a couple of different methods for doing this out on the internet already. I'm going to show uh, my variation, which has a few more tweaks and other helpful things that I haven't seen in the other ones. And we're also going to look through a method for creating this from what is currently a mesh. Um, we're also going to look at if you were doing it from a poly surface. And we're also going to show how we could convert this mesh version into a poly surface so that we could uh, do it that way too. But anyway, uh, with uh, let's, uh, let's get started. So we're going to start by importing this mesh, and we'll set one mesh, which is this one here, and we're going to grab the naked edges. We're going to grab the naked boundary, I'm sorry. Um, and this is a weave bird component, so uh, if you don't have weave bird, well, stay tuned for the next method. Um, I'll probably put a follow to link uh, in order to get there but yeah, this is I mean the method is more or less the same um, for both so don't skip too far ahead anyway we have this mesh and we have the naked edges and we're going to make a bounding box whoops we're gonna make a bounding box around this mesh and we're gonna evaluate that box Now these evaluate box UVW coordinates are basically representative of X, Y, and Z. So we want to evaluate the box at zero in the Z or the W coordinate, which is going to give us the bottom of the box. And U and V are set to 0 0.5 by default, so it's going to give us the center point. And so what we want to do is actually we'll just add in a little tweak, uh, one of the tweaks here. and uh, actually, I'll just show you what we're doing before we do that. We're going to use a project node, and what we're going to do is we're going to project all of these geometries to this plane here. Um, and we're also going to create one more project, which is going to project this mesh to the to the bottom as well. Okay, and so what this is doing is this is taking the bottommost point of the mesh and we're just cr sort of creating a bottom layer, which um, may or may, may not be what you want. You might want a bit of thickness at the bottom, or you might not. If you do want a bit of thickness, we're going to adjust this, um, this point, or this projection point, by using a subtraction node. Um, this is a really helpful tip. If you're moving, if you're moving points, um, you don't you don't actually need to use a move component because move and addition or subtraction of points and vectors actually do the exact same thing. So if I take this point and I subtract, let me just um, add something into here. Okay, so I want to subtract ten units from here. So this is now sitting 10 units below where this point was. Um, and if I wanted to move this point in a negative direction, you can see it's giving me the exact same result. So um, this addition or subtraction value, this is so much more useful just because this uh, this way it's a lot lighter on your system. The move, move node does have a lot of sort of extra extra things going on which can make it slow down a bit so yeah slight tangent but this method is better and then we can just plug that straight into our plane over here 
Um, and you're probably wondering why did I plug a point into a plane? And because we're using the XY plane, it does not matter. Um, it will automatically detect a point in there as the XY. So that's all well and good. Okay, so now we've created we've created um, a sort of baseline for this mesh, and what we need to do is if I just drag my naked edges out here, and in fact, before I put them through the project, I'm going to put them through an explode. So we're going to explode the vertices, oh, not the vertices, this, and we're going to explode the curves, and we're going to put the segments into the project, and then we're going to take the endpoints of the explode, as well as the endpoints of the project, and we are going to construct a mesh. And so in order to do that, we're going to merge all of these points into a merge node. And we could, pl oh, we could, you'd think we might want to plug these in here, but firstly, a construct mesh requires uh, a list of four points. And so these would be our four lists. So all we need to do is graft each of these individually and once they're all grafted, we're almost getting a proper mesh result. All we need to do is swap these two parameters around, and then we'll get nice quads all the way around. Okay, um, I'm also going to need to mesh flip this uh, this mesh here, and then I'm just going to do a weaver bird join on object one. Oh wait. I'm going to merge, what am I going to merge? I'm merging this mesh along with this one and our original one. There we go. And then we want to flatten these and put them into our weaver bird join. And just to make sure we've got a solid mesh, I'm just going to weld and weld my vertices using mesh weld vertices. This isn't an entirely necessary step, but I just like to do it anyway. Um, at this stage, if we were to bake this out, we could uh, we could also just check whether our normals are facing the right way. Um, once again, not a crucial step for the. Um, for the contouring process, but if you did want to actually use this mesh um, in, say, a render or something, a uh, good little top tip here. Um, so the mesh normals are facing the wrong way. We can see that because we're seeing the back side of every mesh. So all we need to do is another mesh flip. Plug that in there, and if I now bake that out, you can see, there we go, mesh is all in order. Okay, cool. That's done. So now we can pretty much start on the contouring process. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw down a contour node, which is this one here. Uh, make sure you do the one that is either a brick or a mesh. And we're going to plug this into here. And we're going to set a contour start point, which is conveniently this point that we've created here, the result of the subtraction, which gives us the base point for our projection. So we'll plug that into here. Um, we're also going to set a distance value and at this point it is absolutely crucial that you check the scale of your um, of your file. You don't want to plug in too small a value here and crash grass up because that'll just well, that'll just mess you up and you have to start all over again. So it's better to start high and then work your way down. So I started at 10, and I can see it probably, you know what, 1 mil contours look like they would work pretty nicely for this mesh. So now at the stage, I can preview off this mesh flip, as well as the original mesh. You can see this is the result we're getting. Okay, so now what we've got is our series of contours and you might notice that we've got 95 
uh, contour results, but if you look at the paths, we've only got 51 paths. That's because sometimes the contour lines cut through multiple points on the mesh, such as these these contours here also, uh, they cut a contour line here and they also cut a contour line around the perimeter. And so hence we get multiple results per plane. So what we need to do is we need to figure out, we don't need to figure out, we need to um, we need to extract how many different contour levels there are. And the way we do that with, is with tree statistics. So tree statistics gives us the um, or it gives us information about the tree. So all we can need to do is just uh, use a list. Oh, we don't even need to use a list length because it already tells us the number of paths and branches in this tree over here is 51. Cool. So now we can use that for a oh, sorry for a series component. And this series is going to define all of the points. Um, of all of the planes that all of these contours lie on. So we set our count, we also set our, um, our step size for our series, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add all of these points to our initial plane, which is this one here. And you can see that gives us a collection of points at each and every contour height value. So that's exactly what we want. And so now that we have these, we need to define a, um, a way to array out these, um, these contour planes. And the way we're going to do that is, firstly, okay, so we know that we have 51 paths. So that tells us that we need 51 sheets. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a rectangular grid. And this rectangular grid is going to start... Okay, so it's going to start at world x, y, that's absolutely fine. And we need to size and size in the x and y direction for each of these. And so what we're going to use is our bounding box information. We're going to use a command called box properties which gives us properties about our bounding box of the original mesh. And if we deconstruct the diagonal vector over here, it'll give us our x and y size. And so we could just plug that into our size x and size y. But I'm just going to do one quick thing before that. I'm going to put down an addition node. And I am going to put in a slider here with some value, make a copy of it, plug it into my Y as well, and this is just going to be a neat little way to give me a bit of padding around all of my values. You'll see what, what I mean in a sec. So I'm going to take all of this, move it over here, and okay, so now we're going to use an orient component. And before we do that, we're just going to use a shortest honor. We haven't set how many uh, how many planes we need for our rectangular grid. So we need, so if we know that we have 51 planes through here, we need some sort of way to get 51 orientation points out of here. The way we do that is we're just going to create a little expression, which is going to be the square root of x, x being this value here, and then when we plug this in here and here, it'll give us, or it'll probably give us too many planes. So um, what we're going to create is a shortest list component, and yes, yeah, so you can see we get 64 values out of here. So I might quickly use another expression, which is floor of the square root of x, which is just going to give us, well, it's going to give us the same thing, okay? We don't need to worry about that then. So we'll flatten the input in here. Sorry, we'll move it to here. We'll flatten input 1 and input 2. And then on this side, we want to graft them because 
um, all our contours are laid out on individual trees. So our contour follows a data structure. That data structure is reflected in grafting these values. So graft A, graft B, plug A in, plug B in, and then we get our result. And so you can see that what this shortest list component does is it just trims any excess off the back of our list of all these additional planes. So I'll preview that off. And now you can see this little padding component that I've, or this little padding function that I've added here just gives you a little bit of spread between each of your planes. Neat little way to add that in. And there we go. So this is. I mean, this is how you can create a contour, or this is how you can create a contour file using a mesh. Now, okay, let's uh, let's go and take that a step further. Okay, so we've got this mesh, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a plane from corner to corner. I'm just going to create it like this. Because let's say we wanted to, we, we've created our like entire site model and we only want to crop out like a smaller region of it for our actual site, for our actual um, contour model that we're making. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in this surface. We'll set one surface and we'll divide that surface. And this is a method that I use quite a lot in my tutorials. Uh, because we want to get a uniform, or well, sort of uniform-ish um, square pattern across this um, this surface. So let's say if it was if it was wildly skewed, you can quite easily see we're getting these very sort of mm, ugly like rectangles that are not going to produce proper topology for our surface. Well within reason. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a surface dimensions component, uh, function and it's going to give us a u and a v value. So we're going to throw down an integer slider and we'll give it a maximum value of 100 and we're going to throw down a division component. We're going to divide u by v and then we're going to multiply the result by this value coming out of here. So what we're getting is a function, oh, we're getting a value of 2.28, which means that this uh, this value is going to be bigger than um, our b. So this will be our u, and this will be our v. Now you can see if we drag this all the way down, what we're getting is nice square divisions across our surface and that's just much friendlier to work with so now what we do is we project all of these points oh, now another key thing you have to know at this point is you have to put your surface above the mesh that you're projecting onto or you don't have to but by default the projection direction is downwards you can set it to upwards you can set it to left right um, forward, back, however you want, but by default it's down, so we're going to use that. And so the geometry we're projecting onto is the mesh, and then we're going to create a surface from points. So we're going to plug that surface in there, and um, yeah. And so now we need to flatten these points coming in here, and we need to know our u divisions, which should be seven plus one. Um, this is something I go over in basically every single time I talk about this because people always ask me um, if you're doing if you're doing a divisions. Um, if you're ever doing a surface division, it's always going to give you one more, um, one more point than the number of points you typed in here. So you can see I've given a value of seven, and each of these paths has eight, um, eight values inside there. So we need eight coming out of here. 
So 8 goes into a U. And we're getting some some sort of strange result. Let's try ah okay. I might also just make sure that this value coming in here is an integer. Okay, no, let's try this one. Okay. So ah yes, of course, that's my U value, not uh, not this one. This is my V, I can see that because that's plugged in there. Anyway. So we've got our surface, um, and we need to turn it into a solid. So what we're going to do is we're going to, once again, well, we'll make a bounding box, similar to what we did here, actually. We could just make a copy of this. Actually, no, I'll redo it. So we're going to make a bounding box around here. We're going to evaluate that bounding box, find the lowest value of the bounding box, and then we're going to just move that value down ever so slightly using our slider again. And we're going to do a subtraction. We're going to subtract from this point, whoops, and then we're going to project. So we're going to project this surface down onto this plane. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's once again just controlling our height below the, um, the projection in case you want just a slightly smaller section, or just in case you want a bit of base to your model. You may or may not. Either way, we've got it. So now we've got the projection. And what we're going to do is we're going to merge our original surface, which is this surface grid here. And we're going to add the projection into there. And we don't need D3. And then we can actually loft surfaces together once these are flattened. Top tip in case you didn't know that. And then all we need to do is a B rep join between these and these. And yep, okay, so now when I preview all of this off and all of this off as well what we should get is a closed b rep yes excellent and so now I might want this to give me a bit more of an accurate result so I can bump up my divisions and okay there we go so now we can actually pretty much just swap out the rest of this definition. Okay, so we're going to plug the B rep into here. And because it's B rep, it's going to take a bit longer to, um, to load, just because they can be quite a bit heavier than meshes in terms of computational power. And so then our base point of the contour is this value here. And then, okay, so now our size of the, um, of the rectangular grid has to be slightly different. So if I just preview this off really quickly, you can see getting huge spacing between there. Because what we need to do is, well, firstly make a copy of this, and we'll just drag these back here, and so we're going to plug our U and our V in to replace this deconstruct vector, and then we'll drag it back over here, and we'll replace our size X and size Y. 
And there we go. There is our, or well, there is our contour, or our set of contours ready to be laser cut. Um, once again, we've got our padding. Um, and this, I mean, this is all dynamic, so if I want to, my, uh, my, 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 if I want my site model to be a little bit bigger, I'll just increase this. The changes will feed through, and there we go. There's our new, uh, there's our new sections for our contour model. Um, and I could set that to the extent. I could set that to be much smaller. I could do whatever I want, and this will always give us really good result for our uh, for our contours. And yeah, there we go. I hope this was a uh, Good tutorial. Oh, okay, one other thing is, I mean, okay. Per personally, I've always preferred um, variable geometry, but one thing you'll find with this method is it's going to really smooth out your edges, which isn't necessarily a problem. But the the mesh is going to give you like these more pointier bits, which, I mean, obviously that's just an aesthetic thing. But you're never going to like you're not really going to get that sort of that sort of definition and curvature unless you're really like um, heightening up your um, your divisions for your B-Rep which is not always ideal but yeah if I were doing this I would probably do it via the mesh method but anyway up to you I'm just making the tools hope you enjoyed this tutorial <laughs>